right guys welcome back to the channel um, I don't really know where this video is going at this point because everything is so all over the place but um, we just picked up a new set of wheels for the truck that we're about to put on and we before we get into today's video I want to let you guys know that our good buddy truck master is going to be giving away his LMM Duramax pretty cool story with the truck actually it used to be my truck um, I bought the truck down in Kentucky uh, what like 14 15 months ago probably uh, right before we got the new shop and the new house and whenever I bought the truck everything seemed good and they strategically had the coolant uh, reservoir cap left loose because it had blown head gaskets so the blown head gaskets and not having my lift set up at the time and in the middle of moving I just sold him the truck but he got everything fixed on it just got new heads he put a bunch of uh, performance parts on it like um, manifolds stuff like that I think it's got a new transfer case in it lift kit wheels and tires the bed had a little spot on it that was messed up and he got that fixed so guys it is a really really nice truck and I think it'd be a cool opportunity for one of you guys so be sure to hand, head over to his channel and check out his videos uh, the link is in this I'll put the uh, link in the description of this video as well um, that kind of will give you guys a opportunity to get entered in that truck giveaway guys be sure to head over there check it out LMM giveaway it's gonna be sweet one of you guys are gonna be really lucky to get to take that truck home it has so many goodies on it and uh, it's just really really nice I think it's a perfect year Duramax and in all honesty you, in all honesty you basically you're getting an LBZ but the newer body style the LMM's only made it for a couple years and it's, it's a rare rust free clean truck so I'm sure you guys head over there check that out what is up guys welcome back to the channel I am happy to see you guys it has been a couple days but we are going to be finishing up our Chevrolet Spark that we've been working on in the garage. This car came in, it's a 2013 Spark, and it had low compression on cylinder number four. And in the last videos, you guys could see that we pulled the cylinder head off and found that the number four exhaust valve, one of the exhaust valves was in fact chipped and the engine was not making compression on cylinder number four, causing our misfire and poor, uh, the engine was basically just running really poor. I think a PCV valve caused this. I think that it uh, filled the valve up with carbon and the carbon buildup on one side would not allow it to seat properly and it broke that part of the valve off and it went bye-bye out the exhaust. But we got the valve replaced at the machine shop and we're putting the car back together now. So we picked the cylinder head up on Monday and today is Wednesday. We worked on it yesterday and got it most of the way buttoned up. Um, head is back on. We had to time the engine obviously and um, we're waiting on a new PCV valve. I have to go to the Chevrolet dealership. It goes in right here where my finger's at. It goes in this little hole back here. So once we can get that installed and finish up some of the serpentine belt stuff on this side and also replace this motor mount bolt that is just MIA. I can't find it anywhere. I have to go get a new one. Then we will be able to start this car. And we're hoping that everything is good. Um, we did have to tear this car down pretty good ways. And... A little bit of a learning curve for me, honestly, with you guys. Be straight up. Um, these are just not pickup trucks. I like, I like my pick them up trucks, but we will definitely work on all domestic cars. These are very similar to the Cobalt uh, Ecotech engines. So doing the timing and all that was pretty similar to that. Um, anyways, you guys can see how small it is on the lift. Guys, we also have a 2014 Dodge out there, you can see, that needs a transmission. I think it snapped an input shaft, but I'm not totally sure. So we will probably get in this afternoon, pull the transmission in it and see what's going on with it. Um, I'm hoping it just snapped an input. We just, as long as it's a clean cut, um, didn't send a bunch of junk into the uh, transmission, then we will obviously just be able to you know, replace that, clean everything up, put it back together. But he may potentially be looking at a full rebuild. I don't know exactly what happened. But he said he hit railroad tracks and I think he was on the throttle a little bit when he hit the tracks and it was just kind of a fluke thing. Um, the shock load busted the shaft. So, uh, with that being said, that's later on in the day. All right, guys, we are out driving the Spark. Everything's going good so far. Uh, we do have one small coolant leak we have to fix. The thermostat housing's leaking, but why I have it filled up, I just wanted to drive it and verify everything was good. The brakes are a little rusty, so they're making some noise, but the car is driving pretty good, guys. Pretty happy with it. So, uh, yeah, that's where we're at. All right, guys, single base shop problems. Here we go, but we got to pull this. 14 Cummins, yeah, 14 Cummins into the garage. Using the old Blazer tow pig. 
pull it up there as close as we can. Then we'll use like a two by four and we just kind of hook it to the bumper and push the truck up into the shop so we can get the transmission pulled out of it and see what broke on it. Like I said, again, I think it's gonna be an input shaft. I'm not totally sure it has park, but it has no forward gears at all, no reverse, nothing. It's just all neutral. I think input shaft snap. So get it pulled in here to the shop, raised up in the air. On the car, I gotta run and get a part for it. And then just kind of top everything off fluids, taking on a couple more dries, if everything's good, it can go back to the customer. So that is where we were at. You guys can see it. We're just gonna start it that way we can use the power steering. The thing has nothing. It doesn't even try to move. All right, guys, we've got the trans pulled out of the 14 here, and we got some carnage, guys. Let's check it out. All right, guys, check it out. Uh-oh, sheared that input shaft right in half. And, guys, he was not even getting on the truck at all, he said, whenever he was driving it. He said that he literally just hit some railroad tracks. So I think the shock load busted that input shaft. But look at that. All right, guys, welcome back. It's now the next day. Finishing up some billing stuff. Uh, a gentleman's coming by to pick up a set of injectors. And we have decided on... Joey's 68 RFE that we are going to have Justin Flatford rebuild the transmission in it. Um, we're going to do a stage one and a half build is what Justin's calling it, but we're, we're going to go up to his shop and drop it off. I don't know if we'll be able to talk much about it today on what all he's going to do. Probably be once it's done, we'll talk about it, but I'm going to do upgraded input shaft, deep pan, and the, you know, guys, um, I really was trying to push Joey away from just fixing the transmission because if we fix this, we'd have to buy a new torque converter, we'd have to buy an input shaft, and chances are there's some metal shavings in the trans, uh, probably in the pump. So we don't want to take the chance of making him buy a new converter, buy a new input shaft, and have an issue, and then we have to pull the trans out again. We're just going to go for it the first time and get him a flat-out diesel stage one rebuild um, and just kind of go from there. So that will be the best bang for his buck. Um, the truck is going to be pushed outside for a couple weeks while the trans is being built. Guys, we are headed up to Flat Out Diesel to drop off the 68 for Joey. And uh, yeah, we're just, um, like I said, I don't know if it's going to be today. We may try and see if we can get Justin to talk about what we're going to do today. But it may possibly be when we pick it up, we'll have him go over everything. And yeah, we'll go through everything that's done to the trans and get back installing it and uh, yeah, so that's what we're doing guys getting this thing picked up Bailey is delivering a truck today and then we have to go pick up a six liter later on this evening and Yeah, so without further ado guys, that's where we're at um, Just trying to be grateful and everything the business that we're getting lately This is honestly a blessing if you would have told me I don't know when it was I posted the video uh, That I quit my job and we're doing this full-time now if you had told me that we were gonna be where we're at simply in two months then I I really wouldn't believe you the amount of work we're getting is is um, not even really overwhelming I, you know I was so overwhelmed when I had my regular nine-to-five job to try and do all this right now I would be so stressed mainly because I would have to go to work all day and think about all this stuff that I got to get done but now that I went full-time um, doing this it's really really a lot more controllable and I can take on a lot more work and I'm just glad that I did it. So once again, just encouraging any of you folk out there that watch the channel and have thought about starting your own business, do so, get into it while you can, get into it before you develop a bunch of debt early on in life and just chase your dreams because guys, they're out there. Thank you to all my customers and everyone, uh, YouTube subscribers, everyone that's supporting Dirty Diamond Diesel LLC. We're gonna blow this thing up, guys. We're gonna, we're gonna make this big and uh, I, I really want you guys to understand that you know, we wouldn't be able to do this and get our name out there as fast as we've been doing it without the support of the subscribers and customers out there spreading the word. So I, I really do appreciate you guys from the bottom of my heart and um, just thank you so much. All right guys, got back from dropping the trans off and we're doing some repair to the gooseneck trailer real quick. So this was bent down real bad and the easiest way we found to bend it back, we just pull the old blazer on the trailer, throw some jacks in there and these ramps back rolling, back rolling up on there. Now we're gonna get her straightened up. Head over to Welder. Doing redneck stuff.
All right, Dan. All right, guys, we are currently rescuing a six liter, flat towing it down here to the gooseneck. Uh, we just pulled it out of a very hard to get spot and we're gonna get back to the house and figure out what's going on with it. So that's what we're doing. I feel like we're a towing company half the time. Lizards like towing just reap on people's trucks, but this is what we're doing. Gotta get her down here and get her on the old goosey. Here we go. Here we go. All right, guys, six liter is all loaded up and going back to the shop. See what's wrong with this thing. Backing in the old gooseneck. Guys, it's five o'clock. Cheers. Beer time. We just picked up, show them in the bed, a new set of wheels. The one is bouncing around, probably getting all scratched up. They're really not in the best shape. I just got them off my buddy, but um, they're a 22 by 12 hostel uh, with a 33 12 50. So we're going to get back to the house and put them on. I thought I could roll around on stocks for a little bit, but it's driving me nuts. Um, trucks just look so much better on aftermarket wheels so i just had to get something to roll on for the rest of the year and then next year uh, i plan on us uh, whenever the problem is this truck has to be used right now as a work truck i'm using it for uh, both my businesses to basically be able to um, we mow lawns now so i'm using this truck to mow lawns and i'm using it as well to go pick up customer trucks and parts and stuff whenever we need them so with towing all the time i can't have big 14 wide wheels on here forged you know expensive wheels and just scratch the crap out of them because i'm using it and uh, basically you know be turning and rubbing the bumper it's just it's just not realistic but the 22 by 12s we're about to put on we'll be able to ride on for the rest of the year and hopefully next year we can get us a new work truck i mean it's probably older than this obviously but something that we don't really care to get beat up and stuff because it is pretty uh I mean, I'm not gonna say I don't like using the same for work truck because it's so comfortable, but it gets really dirty and uh, definitely putting some miles on it pretty quick, right up to 125,000 miles. So uh, yeah, that's basically why we're putting, going with a set of wheels, cheaper set of wheels and not going to some forged wheels, but we will eventually. So yeah, let's get back to the house and we will get these guys thrown on. All right, guys, we got the new Hostel 22 by 12s installed the chromies the tires really aren't as bad shape as i thought they were i thought they were pretty worn whenever i saw the first couple pictures of them but they don't look too bad guys i think they will last at least for the rest of the summer and then we can probably just sell them when the tires are replaced this fall might lose a little money on them but oh well and then we'll get a new set of wheels next year but i think they look pretty decent what do you guys think leave a comment down below I don't know why I ever thought, in my opinion, that black was a good color on this truck for wheels. I think the chrome is absolutely amazing. I'm going to be coming to basically wrapping up the end of this video. Uh, we have the six liter pulled in the shop here. It's my buddy James. And it, I don't know if we picked it up. I think we picked it up in this video. Weirdest thing, guys. We got it here and the truck started starting on its own. No check engine light, nothing's weird. So we think there might be a short in the wiring harness somewhere. We're going to dive into diagging that sometime this week. But truck will start, so we're going to move it out. And um, we're going to get started on the LML today, pulling cab off that truck to do head gaskets, head studs, CP3 conversion, the good stuff, guys. So that is where we're at today. So yeah, we need to pull this truck out, pull the LMM, LML in and get started on it. It is gonna be a pretty big project and um, that truck is used a lot, but we have like a week window, not even quite a week where we can get it in. So. As I showed you guys before, we had the heads on the shelf for it, ready to go. Oh, we're also doing a new Merchant Automotive water pump. But um, we have the heads on the shelf ready to go, headset, uh, head gaskets, AC Delco, grade C's, and then the fleece CP3 kit. So it's gonna be a really fun build. I'm gonna do a full video on it. I'm actually about to start that video right now. So you guys are gonna have to tune back in next week if you wanna check this out and see the process of how we do this. Um, 
really do appreciate it. Also, if any of you guys are in the central Indiana area, central Indiana area, and you want repair work done on your diesel truck, give us a call or give us an email. Email would probably be my preference if you're going to contact us from YouTube. Um, Dirty Diamond Diesel at Yahoo.com. Send me an email, what it is you're needing help with, and then leave your phone number, and I'll reach out and contact you if I feel like it's something that we can help you with. So I do appreciate you guys, each and every one of you guys. Be sure to like, subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next one. See ya.